Hi, I'm Cassie, host of the Curiosity Junkie podcast and the Love and Healing podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please hit the subscribe button to follow us and receive new episodes each week. If you really enjoy the podcast and you're feeling generous, please hit the donate button. We work hard to create original content and keep the podcast ad-free. Today's guest is president and founder of Thermal Imaging Centers of America. Please welcome Carrie Press. Today we have Carrie Press with us. She is with Thermal Imaging Centers of America and we're going to talk about all things thermal imaging. Okay. All right. (laughs) She's like, yes, let's do this. So how did you get into thermal imaging? Well, I will condense the long story for you. <laughs> okay, great. So, my background is corporate America. I spent my early years climbing the corporate ladder, um, upper management in the airline industry, upper management in the waste industry, oh, yeah. and in 2008, I was 42 years old, and I went for my first mammogram. Oh, wow. And my first mammogram... Um, the diagnosis was microcalcifications in the right breast. Okay. And at that time, I knew nothing other than what my mother had always told me, which was, if the doctor tells you to take a pill, you take it. Absolutely. If the doctor tells you you need surgery, you have surgery. You just follow the doctor's orders. Yes. And you don't question. No. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> no. And yeah. so I was told... You have microcalcifications in your right breast, and here are your choices. You can have a lumpectomy. You'll probably need chemo and radiation. You can have a single mastectomy. Probably only need radiation. Or you could have a double mastectomy with reconstruction. You probably won't need chemo and radiation, and that will reduce your chances of recurrence from 25% to less than 2%. Wow. So at that point in my life, I'm thinking, I don't want to do this again. I'm never going to be this healthy. I'm never going to be this young. I'm never going to be this strong. I only want to do this once. I'll have a double mastectomy with reconstruction. Wow. How long did it take you to get to that decision? Was that that was you had to think about? Because I think that would be that was probably the hardest part of the entire almost two year journey. That was probably the hardest part, making the decision as to what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I had to really sit my family down and and say, you know, here is my decision, and you need to know that I'm okay with this regardless of what the outcome is going to be. Uh, yes. Because this is my decision, and so love me and support me through it. Yeah. You know? Super and, important to know you've got... And everybody said, you know, regardless of what we think, you need, you need to do what you need to do. Right. So that was my decision. Then I had eight surgeries in 16 months. Holy smokes. That's a lot. Yes. And they were, I mean, they were overnight surgeries. They weren't, you know, quick little outpatient. I had eight surgeries in 16 months. And so... During that period, and more so right after all of that, um, I felt like my faith is so much stronger today than it was then. Mm -hmm. Though I was a believer then, I'm a very strong believer now. And I look back and I knew I was being spoken to, but I was not a good listener then. Mm Today, I'm a very good listener. <laughs> yes. You're like, I hear you now. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. And in fact, yesterday, I was driving to work, and I was kind of, my ears were itching. I said, I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> Go ahead. But, download. <laughs> yeah. So back then, I knew that I was being compelled to get out of my seat and do something, and I didn't really know what. And so I started out doing a lot of public speaking that kind of mushroomed and snowballed and grew organically and I started speaking all over the country and really just sharing my story and my message then was very different than what it would be today but my message then was if I can do this you can do this don't stick your head in the sand and you know get through it Um, 
my message wouldn't be too far off that today, but I've learned so much. Yes. So much. So what happened was I was a keynote speaker at a fundraising event, and after that event, um, a team had approached me and said, Carrie, what we do and your story go hand in hand. We would love to collaborate with you. And I spent, now here's the condensed part, I spent <laughs> four years of studying, researching, vetting, um, trying to understand, investing, and buying my equipment, um, working side by side with, you know, experienced um, folks that were in the, the industry, thermography, thermal imaging industry. And, um, Four years later, I opened my own clinic. Nice. And what I learned in those four years was that at the time of my diagnosis, had I had a thermal scan, mm -hmm. it would have shown that I, those microcalcifications were the end stage of chronic inflammation and not necessarily the beginning stage of breast cancer. Oh. And the only technology that would have told me that would have been thermography. Wow, and that is amazing to me that it, it can tell you so much, so much more than an x-ray, which is a little harmful as well. <laughs> right, right. It's just amazing, yes. So the amount of radiation that we're exposed to in medical screening technology mm -hmm. is much more dangerous than what we are being told. And you can find statistics and reports that support all of what I'm telling you mm -hmm. um, online, in the medical journals. Um, Consumer Reports put out a super informational video in 2000, I think it was 2013. Um, and you just go to cons YouTube and then Consumer Reports Radiation and you'll find the video there. Mm -hmm. And it really breaks it down. But medical, yeah, medical screening radiation is ionizing radiation, which is cancer-causing radiation. Right. Which is just so crazy that we're encouraged every year as women to go get mammograms, which are uncomfortable in the first place. <laughs> and it's cause, it could be causing more damage than being helpful well not only the radiation that we're exposed to some studies show that one mammogram mm -hmm. is the equivalent to a thousand chest x-rays in cancer causing radiation Wow! one CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis yeah. is the equivalent to 4,000 chest x-rays just so do the math. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, do the math. <laughs> yeah. And you, that video that I refer to will kind of break that down for you. Yeah. But here's the other thing that's really interesting. You know, the tissue of the breast is very um, supple and susceptible tissue. I mean, there is so much going on in breast tissue because of the milk ducts, because of you know, our ability to feed and breastfeed. And so that tissue being compressed yeah. between two 50 pound oh, yeah. steel metal plates um, degrades the tissue. And the integrity of the tissue just, you know, continues to be um, um, hurt. And like I said, degra degraded. And then when you are, you know, shooting it with radiation, you're just kind of setting yourself up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying never have a mammogram. Absolutely not. Right. Um, what I'm saying is mammograms are serve a really good purpose, but their purpose is to tell us exactly where a lesion exists. I'm going to say that again. Good. <laughs> a mammogram is really good at telling us exactly where a lesion exists. So it will tell us the, the latitude and longitude of where a lesion is in the breast tissue. Okay. We as women would rather know 
there's the potential for a lesion rather than a lesion already exists. Yes. Number one. Number two, using mammography for screening purposes isn't real, that's kind of counterintuitive because it's not really screening, it's just telling you what's there. Mm -hmm. We'd rather know ahead of time so that we can do something about it to reverse, forestall, or prevent yes. a lesion from ever existing. And so thermography or thermal imaging is going to tell us how the body is functioning around its structure rather than what the structure looks like. Mm. I like that. So here's an example. Oftentimes I have clients who say, um, you know, we're getting ready for the scan and I have a metal rod in my neck. And I will say to them, well, I won't be able to see the metal rod, but I will be able to see how the body is functioning around the metal rod. Right. So, so it's just the body. Right. And what it's doing and how it's functioning. Right. Okay. And that leads us to indications through the temperature markings that the body might be fighting something. Mm -hmm. It might be preventing itself from some sort of invasion, lesion, development. And then we have the opportunity to do something about it. Yes. I will also want to tell you that this technology, thermal imaging, mm -hmm. many people believe that it's new. You know, oh, it's new, new age. I thought it was new. I had no. never heard of it before January of this year. Thermography has been available in the United States since 1956, came to this country from Germany, and it has been FDA approved since 1982. Wow. I, that's the sad part is there is an alternative to the medical side of things, the hospitals, the radiation, the, the things that can typically do more harm than damage, uh, more damage than good, and we don't hear about them. Like, I just randomly heard about this through Lisa. I, I work with Lisa, and she's been here before, and she was talking about scheduling her next appointment, and I was like, what is that? I've never heard of it. And she was like, oh, yeah, it's great. You go and you can do a whole body scan, and it can tell you anything is going on in your body. I'm like, wait, how am I just now hearing about this? Yes. It's frustrating. And what's really frustrating for me is um, many of my clients will say, well, my doctors don't support um, having a thermal scan. And it's important to understand that thermal imaging is the perfect adjunct to all of the other medical screenings that's out there. So to look at the structure alone is not always enough. Mm -hmm. It is so valuable, as your experience yes. you know, it has attested to, <laughs> it's so valuable to see how the body is functioning mm -hmm. around its structure. So it's the perfect adjunct too. Yeah. There are lots of studies, actually more than 10,000 medical journal entries that support thermal imaging. Mm -hmm. But there are just as many, no, there are a lot less. But there are also studies that um, don't support thermal imaging. But that's because you have to be so careful how you're doing your research mm -hmm. and digging into what these studies were doing, how they were staged, and what, they were, what their purpose was, and what they were used for. Because right. oftentimes, if they're using a thermal scan to confirm what they have found on a mammogram, an ultrasound, an x-ray, a CT scan, there are lots of times that they don't match up. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is, I'll give you two examples. Let's just say, let's use my example, microcalcifications. Those microcalcifications were basically dead. They were dried up mm -hmm. microcalcifications from the chronic inflammation that had receded. Ah, okay. okay. So a thermal scan, the mammogram is gonna show they're there. Right. The biopsy is gonna show they're there. But the thermal scan is gonna show that there is no heat pattern um, um, in conjunction with those microcalcifications. It's already pulled away. Right. Ah. So it has already receded. But if you were doing them on a regular basis, like a mammogram, you would have seen 
I would have heat. seen the heat pattern before the microcalcifications ever showed up. Yes. Now, on the flip side of that, let's say there's a lump, mm -hmm. right? And you're not sure what it is, and the body has already done what it was supposed to do. It has, it could dry them up, it could kill them off, it could encapsulate them. Here's the key, encapsulate those cells, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So now the body has encapsulated it, you feel a lump, you go for a mammogram and the ultrasound and it says there's a lump there, right? Right. right. And it's encapsulated and you do a biopsy and you pull out the cells, there's cells present, but the body has already encapsulated it. So the mammogram, the ultrasound, the biopsy is gonna be positive mm -hmm. and the thermal scan is gonna be negative because the body has encapsulated it and now everything has pulled back or receded or right. Yes. So wow. the body has done what it was supposed to do. Now let's talk about an example where you have a thermal scan and it shows a particular heat pattern. And we'll we'll just say in the breast. I mean it could be okay. anywhere. It shows a heat pattern and you go for a mammogram and an ultrasound and your mammogram and ultrasound is negative, negative findings. That's because it is so early stage yes. that it won't show up on the mammogram or the ultrasound. So therein lies where thermal imaging gets a bad rep. Right, absolutely. I can see that and that makes sense yep. how it works both ways. Yes. And like you said, it's it's a great tool to use in conjunction with yep. the other. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done mammograms for years and because of my traveling work schedule, like the last couple, I just haven't really settled down and done a mammogram. So when I found this, I was like, oh, I've got to try this. And it was full body. You can do different, different parts, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But this was my opportunity to see my whole body and where my health was in a moment, right? which was great. And I was already working with the doctor, and we were doing blood tests to make sure all my levels were good and, and all that. So it was in conjunction with, but I chose to do the thermal imaging versus the mammogram because of the radiation. Right. For me, I'm not saying anybody else, I'm just saying for me, it felt like the right thing to do. And I'm so glad I did. It was, it's been a great experience. So let's talk about the, I did the full body and I know that you could do just a breast also do like for prostate cancer or the prostate mm -hmm. so what, what so what we do options? full body scans which mm -hmm. is the most comprehensive most detailed yes um, that is from the bottom of the feet to the top of the head it includes all of the major systems and functions of the body and major organs one thing it doesn't look at is the brain right because we can't see through bone but a full body scan is 27 to 29 images that um, is the most comprehensive then there is a half body mm -hmm. a half body is from the pubic bone up um, to the top of the head that's 19 images so it does not include the arms legs hands and feet many people say well why do I you know yeah why do I need my arms legs hands and feet there are temperature markings that are in different parts of our body that correlate to particular organs. Let me give you one ah, example. Yes. Um, temperature markings of the hands, when the hands come back looking like they're wearing red gloves, mm -hmm. we call it red glove syndrome, that is indicative of pancreatic issues, pre-diabetic, uh -huh. pre-diabetes, um, insulin resistance issues. So very early, you probably would not be diagnosed with any kind of prediabetes or anything like that, but we can see the early onset of those issues in its developmental stages. So, again, a great opportunity to do something about it before the di before we get the diagnosis. Right, which is fantastic. And the thing I loved working with you is that once my scan came back, we had a little time lapse because of COVID and everything kind of shut down, but I did get to schedule a time with the doctor that read my thermal imaging and he does a video chat and he walks you through everything. And then it was wonderful because you were there and you're taking notes and then 
you make suggestions based on what he finds and recommendations and I was just blown away by all of the information you get and it's full body so right. it's just so I don't know it's for me it was like peace of mind yes. I know I try to eat healthy I don't always eat healthy but I try really hard <laughs> uh, and I try to do the right things and exercise and all of that but I found that the one thing I really hadn't spent much time on was the breathing for me that was such an eye-opening like this was just red yes. because I was not breathing deep breathing and it's something I can change before it becomes a problem, a problem. Yeah. yes and improper breathing which is common but not normal because of our lifestyles right. um, can lead to so many other issues and proper breathing is I mean, we have seen vast improvement in our patients and clients who have done nothing other than proper breathing. Right. And I mean, improving hormone balance, improving digestion, improving elimination, improving breast health. I mean, just, just improper breathing. Yes. But to see how improper breathing affects the entire system is just unbelievable. Yes. The other thing too is, you know, you had said how how awesome it was that you got to talk to the reading doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, how often do you go in for an x-ray or any other screening and you don't get to talk to the doctor who read the images no. and came to these particular findings. And why? And, and yes, yes, what, why, how does that, how? So our reading doctor, you know, provides a consultation where, like you said, he goes over his findings. And in that consultation, he connects the dots for us as to how he came to those findings, what they mean, and then we glean, he provides insight that we glean as to how to move forward and what to do about it. And then, you know, the power of thermography to actually visually see taking it even a step further. So we create a plan mm -hmm. of things to do and then let's come back and look at the Im take images again and let's see I mean that is so empowering to yes. see that what I'm doing is really making a difference. Yes. I mean that is you don't get to see that or feel that in other medical screening modalities. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it does come back to it's a team effort. Like you can give me the information and the tools, but I still have to take the action and make things happen for my health, which that's that's a choice. And I'm sure there are still people who don't follow through and all that. And I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, oh, I wish I had immediately scheduled my my time, but it felt like the world just kind of spun out of control for a little while. Excuse, I know, but <laughs> I did when I reconnected and got the information. I was like, I could have been doing these exercises for the last five months, right? Right, and made a big difference. But for doing it for it'll be about a month before my next scan. I'm going to do another scan in November, I believe I'm scheduled, and um. I'll share some of the maybe before and after pictures yes. of this area because it really was the breathing that I and I, I run typically um, high anxiety where my shoulders are up by my ears and I'm working on that I'm in a less stressful job I'm enjoying what I'm doing with the curiosity junkie thing but for years I ran here and short breaths, just right. and just yeah, yeah. <laughs> constantly locked down. Never, never realized the impact that was having on my body. So I'm so glad that I came. And there were other things that I, I thought might be bigger issues, and but there everything was really for the most part fairly healthy, and which is great confirmation. Yes, <laughs> and the recommendations that we make, um, you know, as a team with the reading doctor, are easy yes they're not I mean I kind of joke with my clients that you know it doesn't mean you have to eat wheat grass and drink water <laughs> right. for the rest of your life I right. mean no right. um, these are easy very simple yes. but very very effective 
changes yes. or additions. They're not really changes. It's not about eliminating, you know, your lifestyle. It's about adding yes. certain things Good. that are going to help with your current diet, with your current lifestyle. They're going to just help. So it's not about depriving and eliminating. Right. It's about um, adding things to help you process mm -hmm. what it is that you're eating, drinking, doing, or not doing. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's very specific to the individual and what your body needs. Right. And again, I think it was a few simple exercises and purchasing a, um, what is that called? The foam? The foam roller. Foam roller. And then some breathing exercises and exercises to kind of open things up. Yep. So it wasn't like it was a huge list of things I've got to do. Right. And then, you know, of the toolbox, mm -hmm. if you will, we take out, based on your images, the top three things or the top five things that are specific for you right. based on the results of your scan. So all of the things that are in the toolbox are beneficial, are good, but based on your results, let's focus on these three first, or let's focus on these five first. Right. And um, one of the things I want to say is since COVID, mm -hmm. um, my clientele's way of thinking has kind of changed. Okay. So underlying um, issues. And many of my new patients are concerned about going to the doctors now. They don't want to go to the doctors and get a diagnosis and be written a prescription. Right. They want to get to the root cause of the problem yes. and do something about it rather than taking a pill to mask the symptoms of what they're feeling. Yes. And so there's been a, a shift. Which is wonderful. In this last year where people are looking for how do I fix this problem rather than just take a pill for the problem. I want to get rid of this problem. Yes. And so thermal imaging will get to the root cause of it. Mm -hmm. We can we can find um, how to, again, prevent, reverse, forestall um, what might be developing so that we don't have to take a prescription. Yes, yes. And that is key. That is so key because I, I, I've noticed with parents and grandparents that once they start on medication, there's another side effect which creates another pill. And before you know it, you've got one of those little flip tops and it has, sorry mom, probably five or six pills in it for each morning day. and night. Yes. And I think there's, there's a better way. You, here's my theory. You're either going to invest in your health now at a, at a healthy age or an age where you can change things and reverse and take some action or you're going to be spending money down the road on your health so why not do it now when you can make some changes so that you're living longer and healthier not just longer and on medication and not living the life that you really want to live so and you know you're making a really good point not only um, figuratively but literally. Yes. So at um, one of my presentations, we had talked about um, investing in your, invest in your health now or pay for it later. Yes, absolutely. And that is That's great. That is financially yes. and figuratively. We'll stop there for today. And I'm gonna say thank you, Carrie, for thank taking you. the time. I know you're a very busy woman, but I do appreciate you taking the time to Talk to me and the audience. <laughs> yes, thank you. And let me just say, Thermal Imaging Centers of America in Glendale, Arizona. Um, I'll just share my telephone Yes, number. yeah, absolutely. Six, I totally two, three, to that, so. two, four, three, seven, one, zero, zero. Feel free to call anytime. Um, if I'm with a client, just leave a message and I'll return your call. I'll tell you the number again, 623-243-7100. And I'm open to answer any questions that you may have about thermal imaging. Absolutely. And I will put all of the contact information in the description for YouTube uh, as well as in the podcast so that you have access to connect with Carrie. 
and the website you can yes. put my website in there because there's videos in there that are very informative yes then you can get a kind of a glimpse into and like I said if you're not in this area is thermal imaging centers of America is that all over this or are there is, certain areas this is my business so I'm the president and founder of thermal imaging centers of America mm-hmm. so there are thermal imaging um, um, practices mm-hmm. across the country If you need help finding a thermal imaging center in your area, reach out to me and I can help you. I can give you insight as to what technology that particular practice is using, what reading doctor they're using, and give you insight in regard to that. I think it's important to know that not all thermography is equal. I was just going to so, say, is yeah. that a thing Yes, like you should investigate? Yes, okay. it's important. And I'm willing to help you to understand that and kind of vet your own in your own area. I'm, I'm willing because it's more important that thermal imaging, you get educated about thermal imaging than anything else. That's the most yes. important. So feel free to contact me. I am more than willing to help. I love it. Yes. All right. Well, that's going to be a wrap for us today. Thank you for tuning in, watching, listening. Stay safe, stay curious, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thanks.